Source control is an effective tool that should be a part of every developer's toolkit. Even in single developer situations, it allows for keeping track of what changes were made and grants the ability to easily roll back changes or undo a breaking change. It also allows for expanding the development team by offering the ability to distribute your changes to multiple environments and machines. Let's create a sample project called Source Control 1. Connect to the database. And let's create a model. We'll create one for supplier's database entity. We'll sort by name and remove the home page column. Let's proceed to the summary. Notice that a single database entity will be presented to the user. Let's go ahead and generate. Here is our list of suppliers. We would like to make some customizations to our app, but first we'll want to place the project under source control. Let's open the project in Visual Studio. In the bottom right corner, we can go ahead and press Add to Source Control. For reference, we can see that the default location for the application is under my username, Source Repos. The Source Control 1 folder has been placed under Source Control. We can see the .git folder. Notice that the app generator will provide a default git ignore file, which will control the file names and types that git will ignore. The git plugin will generate an initial commit that places all the non-ignored files under source control. Notice that we have lock icons next to all the files in our directory. This indicates that there are no changes in these files since the last time a commit was made. We can go ahead and view a list of changes by clicking on the edit icon. We can see that there are no changes in the working directory. Let's go ahead and regenerate the project. We can see that our list of files stays the same, with no new changes. Next, let's go ahead and add a new model to our project. Let's add products database entity. We'll sort by product name. Let's save the model. Let's go ahead and generate. We can see our new products page. Notice that under our list of changes, we now have our added model, the runtime controller definition, and the page added to contain the controller. The page has been added to the sitemap. Let's enter a commit message and save our changes in a new commit.
we can see that we now have another commit that contains those changes. Let's make a few more changes to the model. From suppliers, let's grab the country and phone. Save and generate. If we jump to products, we can now view the supplier phone and country. We can see that the model and the runtime controller have been updated with the new fields. Make sure to enter a commit message and press commit. On the edit form of a supplier, we'll want to display a list of products. Let's add a child data view. Open the project designer. Under controllers, drag and drop the products controller onto suppliers. This has created a child data view called products. Next, bind it to edit form one. Let's go ahead and generate. Notice that our list of related products is now visible on the supplier's edit form. We can see that, that the runtime controller definition for suppliers has changed. Here's the new field, and here's the field bound to the edit form. There's also an additional sync file. Sync files are created for each combination of computer name and username to allow us to isolate changes made by different users. Let's commit our new changes. We'll probably want our products list higher up in the form so the user can easily spot them. Let's drag and drop the products data view field above address. Go ahead and generate. We can now view our products immediately upon opening the form. The runtime controller definition has been modified as well as the additional transactions added to our sync file. Let's go ahead and commit these changes. Next, we may want to group our address information in a collapsed category below the list of products. Let's create a new category with the name address. We'll set collapsed to yes. Move all the address fields into this category. and generate. We can see our fields are in a collapsed category. The user has to manually expand it to view the address. This is how the address category may look like on a phone. Let's go ahead and commit our changes.
let's say our users are giving bad feedback on our collapse category, we'll want to go ahead and revert the change. Under the history, we'll right click on our commit and press revert. This will create another commit that undoes the changes from the reverted commit. We can see the changes here by double clicking on the commit. You can see that it removes our transactions. When new changes or reverted changes have been introduced outside of the code on time environment, we'll need to refresh the project. We will not need to refresh the database schema. The refresh process will pick up all transactions in sync files that it can find in the project directory and rebuild the runtime controllers as necessary. We can see that our new category has been removed from the project definition. We'll need to generate it to apply it to the runtime definition. The new category has been removed. Git is a distributed versioning system. This means that it'll keep a local copy of the entire repository on your computer, as well as push to any host that you may choose to push your repo to. It is strongly recommended to push your repo to an external host, such as GitHub, Bitbucket, Azure DevOps, or your company's in-house hosted solution. In this case, I'll want to push it to a new project under my Azure DevOps account. Under the Team Explorer pane, click the Home icon and press Sync. Let's press Publish Git Repo to Azure DevOps Services. Select the correct account, the organization, as well as the project you'd like to place the repo under. Give the repo a name and press Publish. We can now view our repo on the web. If we go to repos, we can now view our source control on the web, as well as a list of commits. Our repo is now shareable to other developers and our customers. Here, I am on a separate machine and am ready to start contributing to this app. In Visual Studio, let's press File, Clone or Check Out. Let's connect to Azure DevOps. And let's select our repo. Press Clone. Our project is now present on this computer. After refreshing or restarting the app generator, I can now see my project. Let's go ahead and generate it. And here's my project on my second machine. Let's say we want to place the address fields in a separate category in two columns. Let's switch back to code on time. Open the project designer.
Create a new category for Edit Form 1 with Floating enabled. Let's place all the address fields in this new category. Let's check out our changes. We can now see our fields in a two-column presentation. If we jump back to Visual Studio, you can see we have a few changes. The applicable changes can be found under the Runtime Controller definition. You can see that there's an additional sync file now created under my computer name plus the account name. Let's go ahead and commit this. Note that committing will now save it to your local repository. To share it to the internet, you'll need to go ahead and push it. We can see that there's one commit pending to push. Let's go ahead and press push. It has now been uploaded to our central repository. Let's jump back to our other computer. We're now back on our other machine. Let's go ahead and pull the new changes. Click on the up arrow and press pull under incoming commits. Our local repository has downloaded the changes from the server and integrated it into our current working directory. We can see our change here. In the app generator, let's go ahead and refresh to integrate the changes from our other machine. We now have our address fields in two columns. Now we have an easy way to co-develop projects and share changes between developers. It is recommended to create small, discrete commits to easily keep track of small units of work, and to create branches for any major features. When features are complete, use pull requests to review code among the team, and then merge those branches into the master branch.